Today, we introduce a new actor into our game, nature. Now, nature represents the random forces of the universe. Nature doesn't have a payoff, and nature doesn't decide what to do. Nature acts according to pure randomness. So, for example, in this game, nature will play A 80% of the time and will play B 20% of the time. You can imagine there's a 10-sided die, and if the number comes up 1 through 8, it's A, 9 or 10, it's B. Then in this game, John moves, but because of this uncertainty, when John moves, he doesn't know if nature picked A or B. Why don't you figure out what John should do? Pause the video and figure out what John should do. Okay, here's what I think John should do. When John gets to move, he should say, well, okay, there's an 80% chance I'm here and a 20% chance I'm here. Let's calculate my expected payoff. If I pick X, I get 10 times probability 0.8 plus 4 times probability 0.2. And if I didn't make a math mistake, that means X gives me a payoff on average of 8.8. .8. If I pick Y, I get 2 with probability 0.8 and 40 with probability 0.2. And that, on average, gives John a payoff of 9.6. Since our assumption in game theory is that players maximize their expected payoff, a rational John should pick Y. Let's do a far more complicated game. Now, in this game, nature moves left or right. After nature moves left or right, player one gets to move, and player one can go up or top, or down or bottom. So basically, nat nature will make player one either a lefty or a righty. So if nature moves here, player one will know that, will know that he's a lefty because there's no uncertainty concerning player one, and then player one will decide to go up or down. In contrast, if nature moves right, and nature moves right half the time, Player one will know that he's a righty and will he get to go to the top or the bottom. Because there's no oval around what player where player one is, player one knows what nature does. So let's imagine nature picks left and player one says down. Well now player two will find himself right here, and there's no I haven't drawn any uncertainty, so player two will know he's here and will pick L or M. If nature picks right, and player one decides to go to the bottom, again, no uncertainty, player two will know he's here and will pick E or F. Things get interesting if player one picks up if he's a lefty or picks top if he's a righty. Now, player two will face some uncertainty. Player two will know that he's up here. He knows that player one either picked up or top as opposed to down or bottom, but he won't know if he is on the left or the right. A way to look at this game is to say that player one has two types, lefty or righty. Nature picks what type player one is. Player one is aware of his type, but player two does not always become aware of player one's type. If player one chooses to play down here or bottom here, then player two knows where he is and he knows what nature did to player one. But if player one chooses up or top, then player two faces uncertainty. He's not sure if he's here or here, but he still has to figure out what to, what to do for his move. Why don't you pause the video and figure out what you think should happen? Okay. Let's solve this game. And with these games, it's easiest you know, to pick little parts of the game that you know you can solve, solve them, and move on. So here's something that's really easy to figure out. If player two finds himself right here, he knows where he is, and he knows L gives him eight, and M gives him seven. So he knows he's gonna pick L. And if player two finds himself right here, he knows that E gives him five, and F gives him 10. So he'll pick F to get the 10. Player one will realize this. Player one, if nature makes him a lefty, if nature moves this way, will know down will give me one, 
and he'll know if nature makes me a righty, bottom will give me well, one as well in this game. Now, what should happen to player two if he's told he's up here? What should player two do? Well, the way to figure this out is to, is to ask yourself, see, player two is uncertain if he's here or here. If he knew he was here, he would want x because 10 is greater than 5. And if player 2 knew he was here, oh, he'd also want x because 2 is greater than 1. That makes y a stupid strategy because no matter where player 2 is, he gets a higher payoff from x than from y. So, you know, you don't play stupid strategies. So player 2, if he finds himself in this oval, will always play x. He'll always play up. Now it becomes easy to figure out what player one should do. If nature makes player one a lefty, he'll say, well, up leads to x, which leads to 11. Down leads to l, which leads to 1. I'm going with up if I'm a lefty. Player one will say, if nature made me a righty, up or top leads to x, which leads to ooh, 0. Bottom leads to f, which leads to 1, which is better. So player one will say, play bottom. So this game... There are two things that can happen. If nature picks left, we end up here. And if nature picks right, we end up with here. So we would end up here with probability 0.5, and we'd end up down here with also probability 0.5. All right, let's move on to another game where I'll, I'll just change the payoffs. So again, why don't you pause the video and figure out what you think should happen. Okay. So again, the easiest part of this game to solve is what happens if player two is here or here. Player two is here, we'll say, well, I would pick L because eight is greater than seven. And if player two is, finds himself down here, he'll say, I pick F because 10 is greater than five. And um, player one will realize what player two will do if player one goes down or, or bottom. All right, now what about player two finds himself right here? Well, he would say, well, if I somehow knew I was on the left, then I would want X. If I knew I was on the right, I would want Y. Oh, too bad. I can't figure out what I'm going to do until I, I have some better insight into how I might get here. But there's something else we can figure out, something else that we know should happen. Player one, if he's a lefty, if nature goes this way, should never go up. In fact, up is a stupid strategy because look, if player one goes up, he gets five, because both of these numbers are five. He goes down, he gets nine. Well, obviously, you know, going up is stupid. So player one, if he's a lefty, should never go up. What about if player one is a righty? Does he know if he should go up or down? Well, if he goes up, he could get seven or zero, whereas if he goes down, he could get, well, he'll get five. So uh, he can't figure out what he's going to do here until he knows what player two would do. But now the final piece is what player two will do. Player two should reason that lefty is never going to go down. Now, lefty is never going to go up, right? Player two should say, wait, going up is a stupid strategy for player one if nature pick left. But if nature pick right, yeah, it seems plausible. Maybe player one would go up. So if this guy is never going up, this guy is definitely going down, and this guy, eh, we can't really be sure, player two should say, if I find myself in this information set, I should infer that I'm here. And if I should infer that I'm here, well, I'm going with Y because nine is greater than zero. Finally, that tells us what player two should do if he's a righty. Because if player two's a righty, should say top gives me Y, leads to Y, which leads to seven, whereas bottom F, five, seven, better than five, and we have our equilibrium, where we end up here half the time because of this 0.5, and we end up here half the time because of this 0.5.
me talk a bit more about this game. First, notice that I have different letters for here and here, but the same letter for here and here. That's because of the uncertainty. Player two, right, he's going to make the same choice if he is on the left or the right, because he doesn't know if he's on the left or the right. You know, and obviously if I gave this a different variable name, if I said, well, you know, I'm not telling you whether you're on the left or the right, but this is labeled X and Y, and this is labeled P or Q, and well, you said, well, gee, okay, if my choice is P or Q, I happen to know I'm on the right, which means you haven't drawn the game properly. But player two can make different decisions here and here, so it's okay to give these different um, variable names. Also, the particular type of equilibrium this represents is, is what's called a separating equilibrium. In a separating equilibrium, the player who might face uncertainty knows um, what has the uncertainty resolved for him by the time he moves. So in player two moves, right, again, he's, he doesn't know something in this game. He doesn't know what nature did. But in the equilibrium, he does end up knowing because in this equilibrium, only righties go up. So player two, you know, if, if he's told, all right, your move, you're in here, he says, well, I, you know, the basis of the game, that directly doesn't tell me, that doesn't resolve the uncertainty. But since I know in this equilibrium, only rights uh, march this way, I know for certain when I move, I'm here. So this is a separating equilibrium. Basically, it's separating because the player ones do different things. They separate themselves in the eyes of the player who might face uncertainty. The opposite of a separating equilibrium is a pooling equilibrium. Pooling is where people go together. That's where both player ones would go here, and player two couldn't figure out. Player two couldn't distinguish, couldn't separate what nature did, whether nature made player one a lefty or a righty. Finally, I want to return this to the idea of um, no regrets equilibrium. So remember, that was the big point of a Nash equilibrium is, is no regrets. And in no regrets equilibrium, everyone is happy with their choice given the other person's choice. So you figure I can't affect anyone else's move but my own, but this is a no regrets outcome if given what everyone else does, I'm happy with my move. Now, there are actually three players we have to worry about regret. And nature isn't one of them. Nature can't regret. Nature is the flip of a coin, the roll of a die. Die doesn't regret what they get. The three players are, of course, player two, but also the two types of player ones, whether player one is a lefty or a righty. So we can kind of treat them as separate players. Now, if you were actually were to play this game or when I have my students play this game in the classroom, I say, all right, First player one, secretly flip a coin. If it comes up, say, heads, you're a lefty. If it comes up, tails, you're a righty. Then either, you know, if you go, go this way, you tell player two where player two is. And if you go this way, you tell player two, you know, she is in this information set. So again, there, there's, three, there's three players. And we have to, for this to be an equilibrium, no one can regret their choice given what the other two people did. Let's go and verify that this is indeed a no regrets equilibrium. Okay, first, player one lefty. Does he regret going down given what player two is going to do? Well, he gets nine, and if he, the only other thing he could do if he's a lefty is go up and he would get five. So this guy doesn't regret. What about player one if he's a righty? Does he regret? Well, right now he's getting seven, and equilibrium is getting seven. The only other thing he could do would be to go this way, and if he did that, he would end up with five. So he doesn't regret. What about player two? Does player two regret? Well, player two, player two ends up here. If, if nature ends up picking left, player two certainly doesn't regret because getting eight, or he could get seven. And in this equilibrium, player two also doesn't regret his choice if he ends up here, because in this equilibrium, he only ends up here and picking Y if just righty goes up. So player two doesn't regret picking Y, given the only time he's up here is if right um, decided to move in that direction. Okay, thank you.